Welcome back, band family. Before we get started today, I wanted to share with you kind of a cool app that uh, I encourage you to get. It's totally free and it's available for Android devices as well as for Apple iOS devices. It's called Bandmate and it is a tuner. A tuner uh, is a device that tells you what note you're playing. And Bandmate looks like this. When you first start up the app, uh, there's two different controls you can adjust. The first is this little switch on the far right side. You can either ha have it select this, uh, it looks like a hashtag on the bottom. That's a musical symbol we call a sharp. Or you can select the top symbol up there, which looks like kind of half of a heart with a line through it. Uh, that's called a flat. And I would switch it so that the flat on top is selected. The other thing you can select on this app is which instrument you play. So select the instrument from your list and then it will tell you what pitch you are producing. You can even try by singing or whistling a note. No, oh, I guess that was an E flat. So check out Bandmate, and again, it's totally free for Android and iOS Apple devices. I've put a link to this in the resources folder on Schoology if you can't find it in the uh, App Store for your device. Let's work on our embouchure. Embouchure, if you recall from our instrument fitting video, is the face you make uh, to play an instrument. To work on our embouchure, you'll also need a mirror. It can be a small portable mirror like the one I have, or it can be a full-size mirror on the wall, whatever you have. The shape we want to make for any brass instrument, we start with what I call the M face. That's the same face you'd make if you were saying the letter M. Go ahead and do that now. M. Next, make the M face, but don't make any sound. And finally, let's have you blow air gently between your lips while maintaining that M face. Don't let your face change. That last part can be a little bit tricky because your lips might blow out in the middle, <laughs> or you might find that you're making weird faces with your uh, chin. So make sure that that M face doesn't change even as air comes out. Are you ready to make some sound? When you open your instrument case, you want to make sure that the instrument doesn't fall out and get damaged. So there's a trick to opening most instrument cases. Chances are the two halves of your case uh, are different in size. One is thinner than the other. So put the case on the ground and have it so that the thin uh, half is on top. That's the lid, all right? Unlatch the latches, open up the lid, and you'll see the instrument inside. Now be careful, I don't want you to start grabbing a bunch of parts and jamming them together. We'll do this one step at a time over the next several lessons. The only part you need for today is the mouthpiece. So find the mouthpiece. If the mouthpiece is inside of a, a box or a bag, you can take it out of the packaging and throw that packaging away. We're gonna hold the mouthpiece in our right hand. That's the one over here. And we're gonna hold the bottom of the mouthpiece with our thumb and first two fingers. The mouthpiece has this long skinny part and that's called the shank. We're going to hold it at the bottom of the shank with our thumb and first two fingers of our right hand. Next, make the M face and press the mouthpiece right in the center. As you do that, double check it with a mirror and then blow air through the mouthpiece. But as you're watching in the mirror, don't let your face shape change at all. You'll notice too that when I bring the mouthpiece up to my face, the mouthpiece comes to me. I don't go to it. Let's try it again, but test yourself. How long can you blow air? How many counts can you blow air? All right, now for the magic. Do the same thing, but while you're blowing that really long note, gently touch your lips together in the middle of blowing that long note. As your lips come into contact, you might get a sound. That sound is called a buzz. How'd you do? Were you able to get that sound in the middle when your lips gently touch together? This exercise we call air to sound. We actually play this exercise on a lot of different instruments. On a brass instrument, you could call it air to buzz because that's really the sound we get when our lips touch and they make that vibrating sound. So what I'd like you to do right now is pause the video, grab your mirror, try it several more times and see if you can consistently 
change from air to sound simply by bringing the lips together. Make sure you're in front of a mirror the whole time. You don't want your face to change shape at all as you do this. If you're having a hard time getting that buzz sound to happen, I've got some suggestions and some tips. First, make sure that your lips are gently touching together. If they don't touch together and you just get air, that means there's still an opening between your lips. The lips do need to touch. If you don't get any sound, but you also can't get any air out of the mouthpiece, that means that your lips are probably squeezing together really, really tight and no air and no sound is coming out. So you need to use just the right amount of pressure between your lips to go from air to sound. As always, don't let your face change shape as you're doing this. If your lips come out in order for you to get a sound, you're buzzing the wrong part of your lips. It needs to be the M face as you buzz to get the correct part of your lips to buzz together. You might remember from the instrument fitting video, we can get a lot of different crazy sounds with our lips uh, that are not instrument brass buzzing sounds. We need to have a very specific part of our lips touching uh, together. And to figure that out, we just need to make the M face and it'll work. Another troubleshooting tip is to make sure that you are uh, blowing lots of fast air. If barely any air is coming out of your, of your mouth, you probably won't get a buzz. So use lots and lots of air. Another thing that can help is to make sure that your lips are somewhat wet. Uh, it helps some players, some others it doesn't, but if you're having a hard time, try licking your lips and that might help you out. Once you can consistently go from air to sound in the middle, the next exercise is called instant sound. Or if you're a brass player, I guess we could call it instant buzz. And what we're gonna do is we're gonna start buzzing from the very first moment that we blow. As before, you might want to pause the video and try this several more times by yourself. Work on that instant sound exercise. Once you can consistently do the instant sound exercise, we can try another game. This one's called the jet game. Think about an airplane or a jet plane. It's, as it's flying overhead, you want to make sure that the airplane is very steady. What do you think would happen if you were going up and down and up and down? What would your passengers think in the back? Yeah, they'd be screaming, they'd be saying, oh, this pilot, what, is the, what are they doing? It's possible they might start vomiting all over the place. Ooh, gross. So we wanna make sure that our jets overhead are flying very steady and even. So the jet exercise is to make sure that your buzz does not change at all. We also wanna make sure the buzz doesn't stop in the middle. That would, in an airplane, be pretty scary if all of a sudden the jet engines stopped in the middle of flying. So make sure that jet sound keeps going the whole time. So let's try some jet exercises. Keep the buzz the same the whole time and don't let it stop. I'm gonna do some bad jet sounds. You figure out what is wrong with this. Is the problem that the jet engines are stopping or is the problem that the jet is going up and down and up and down? How about example number one? Yeah, the problem that time was that the engines kept stopping. So uh, what's actually happening there is your lips are separating and then coming back together. So if that does happen and, you, and you, you lose the buzz, I mean, yeah, fix it. Start that engine up again, bring those lips together, but it's better to avoid that entirely. Don't let your lips separate and you won't have your jet engines stopping in the middle. Let's try example number two. Tell me what's wrong with this jet sound. Yeah, the problem there was that the jet airplane was going up and down and up and down. Passengers in the back, they'd definitely be vomiting after that airplane flight. Here's another troubleshooting tip. I mentioned before that you need to make sure your face stays the same as you're buzzing, right? One common problem that some people have is they relax their cheeks and specifically the muscles at the corners of their mouth and the cheeks puff out. I'll show you what I mean. If you find that your cheeks are puffing out, I want you to firm up the corners of your mouth to bring the cheeks back in. In fact, this is actually a really useful exercise for everybody to try because by bringing your cheeks in after you've allowed them to puff out, you're finding the muscles that we call the corners. So try this now. Allow those cheeks to puff out and then bring them back in by firming up our corners right here. <laughs> 
Did you notice something about the sound or the pitch that I was producing with those buzz sounds before and after I firmed up my corners? When I firmed up those corners, the pitch went higher. And that is actually the way we get higher notes. We simply firm up our corners. If you relax your corners, you'll get a lower note, but don't relax so much that your cheeks puff out. So the next jet exercise we're gonna do is to do high jets and low jets. Try doing that same jet exercise, but this time squeeze the corners as you blow and you'll find you're probably gonna get a higher note than before. Here's a low jet. Here's a high jet. As with all of our jet exercises, we want to make sure that we are keeping it very steady and even. Don't let your jet go up and down. Pick an altitude. Either play a high jet or a low jet. Firm corners for the high jet, relaxed corners for the low jet. Are you ready for our last game for today's lesson? We're going to play something called dropping bombs, but I need your help to do this. I'm going to make the sound of a bomb dropping from really high going to really low. What I want you to do is when I point to you, I want you to make an explosion sound with your voice, like, like that. Okay. So I'll make the, the, the dropping bomb sound. You provide the explosion. So now I'll teach you how I did that dropping bomb sound. It was kind of like I went from a high jet to a low jet and I just didn't stop my air in between. So I firmed up my corners and then I relaxed them and I went from a high jet to a low jet. To make it even more extreme though, I also used my tongue position or my tongue voicing. I'll tell you what I mean. Say T, now say ta. Your tongue move was for those two, right? Try saying ti-ya. As you say ti-ya, your tongue starts high and then it drops down low. Ti-ya. Try it with me. Ti-ya. If you're not sure about that, you can also look in the mirror. Ti-ya. Ah, my tongue dropped as I went from e to a. Ah. Now try breathing ti-ya, like whispering it. Ti-ya. All right? The T tongue voicing helps you get high notes. The a ah tongue voicing helps you get low notes. If you combine that with the corners, you're gonna extend your range. So we'll start by firming our corners and saying T, then we'll relax our corners and drop our tongue to say ah. Watch, T ah. If I do that while I'm uh, buzzing, T ah, and buzz at the same time, I'll go from high to low and I'll get that dropping bomb. Try it by your, uh, yourself once, pause the video and try a few dropping bombs by buzzing, relaxing as you go, and thinking yeah, with the tongue. <coughs> now, I've been playing for a long time, so I'm able to do a dropping bomb that starts from very, very high and goes to very, very low. Because this is like literally your first lesson, your change of sound might barely move. It'll go from here to there. And in time, you'll get better at starting even higher and better at ending even lower. You get better by practicing. So your goal over the next couple days is every day, play some of these exercises and get better. The exercises I want you to practice every day, I'll use the mouthpiece. Start with air, then air to sound, and then instant sound. The instant sound is really the same thing as the jets, so try some of those. High jets and low jets, making sure that you don't change the sound at all as you do these jets and making sure that the buzz doesn't go away. And then, for some extra practice, try some dropping bombs. And the explosion sound effect at the end, purely optional. I think it's fun, though. I need to warn you about the rest of the instrument in your case. Don't try to put it together yet, and don't try to hold it, operate it, make sounds with it, launch it into space. Don't do anything with the instrument yet. And this is the hardest part about starting out band, because I know you're super excited. You want to just jam that whole instrument together. But that is not the Texas method. Think about it this way. Imagine I was the coach of a hockey team. And imagine this hockey team had players who had never played hockey before. They'd never even stepped out onto the ice before. Should I, at that first practice, put them in full equipment, send them out and tell them to play hockey? Or should I teach them how to skate first? Yeah, you should teach them how to skate. 
because that is the most important part of hockey is the skating. And so what we're doing right now, this mouthpiece buzzing, this is the most important part of playing a brass instrument. The rest of it, operating valves or slides or all the rest of it, that's not the important part. The important part is the skating. I meant the buzzing. So every day, work on these exercises, get better at it. Do it in front of a mirror, and this is exactly like going out there and skating. Imagine those hockey players that have never skated before. If they popped all that equipment on, grabbed a stick and went out there and tried to play hockey, would they still be thinking about proper technique and form for their skating? No, they'd be doing it all wrong. And that's exactly what's gonna happen if you put your instrument together, maybe you break it, maybe you don't, you try to play that instrument, you're not gonna be thinking about proper technique with the buzz. You're gonna be thinking about everything else. That's not the Texas method. Concentrate on one thing at a time. And today, that's buzzing. The single most important thing you will do with this instrument. So, until next time, go practice.